So we've moved forwards a little bit from before. We have 13 green XP. Because we went past eight trains on time trains per hour in here, it gave me three red points. So at this stage, although we're not going to look at these yet in a future video, we can choose regional trains or freights. We've only got the three points that we need for one or the other. And then whichever one we pick, we will then be responsible for earning more red points using that particular train to buy the other type of train as well as buying all of these other things. But because I've now got up to 10 trains per hour, just about squashed them into my little single track layout, I've now got to tier two. Um, and this really makes a big difference to in terms of um, intercities are good cash generators. Contract offers just make it easier to choose the things that you want, more stations. These two sensors are a game changer. They're probably the two most important things in the game. But also for 10 points, we can get uh, 80 kilometer an hour tracks. We only have 40 at the minute. And then eventually if we get 35 points, we can get the 120 kilometer tracks. We don't get the 200 ones until tier three. Now this is um, a real biggie at the moment. If I just install basic tracks, it's called basic, but we've already got the basic ones. If we remember in here, we can see the blue outline for tracks that are 40 kilometers an hour. However, if you click on a train, it will tell you its maximum speed is 120. So at the moment, these trains are running a third of their top speed. And it kind of has two effects really. On the trains that are offering more points, like say that one, I can have up to $4,000, um, whatever, per train, but I'm only getting 2000 and that's because it's running so slowly. And so if I want to get the full 4000 I need to speed up the tracks and adjust the timetable. And this can be a bit of a pain, but if we look at the moment, uh, if I want to add in another train, for example, so here's one that goes from... Uh, Richtung Weilheim down to Geltendorf and back again so there and there so that should be quite easy except this single track is really limiting so if I attempt to fit that in you can see I'm getting conflicts everywhere and even if I can find some spaces like this because this train is doing the same thing going out and back we're actually going to bump into each other on the single track section in between um, so I can't actually put it there and you can kind of see that it makes it really difficult to fit more trains in. And because these are only single lines, you know, my options are really limited on this map. You see, I've doubled this up just to increase the throughput a little bit. But as you can see from this section, there's no space to build a second track along anywhere here. If we wanted to, we could build this out a little bit, but it probably wouldn't make a big difference. I've also added some more signals, and that is in case... This train needs to leave here to go to Geltendorf. If there's already a train in the platform um, before, it would block that entire route. So the train would be stuck at this station. So having an intermediate signal just allows the train to at least come out to here before it needs to find the platform empty. So that's just buying a bit more capacity. So upgrading the speed of the tracks is really a game changer because if the trains can move more quickly, then what actually happens is the gaps between these um, are going to start opening up. So that's what we're going to do. We've got a bit of money and the 80 kilometer tracks are not, you know, ridiculously expensive. So we just click there, click there, and it only pays the upgrade cost. It doesn't, you don't have to pay the full 2000 If you've already got an $800 section of track, then you'll just pay $1,400, uh, 1200 per section to upgrade it. The stations do benefit um, from speeding up, but because the trains are slowing down here anyway, the, the difference is less impressive than when you have um, you know a long piece of track like this. But obviously, the more you want to upgrade, the more it's going to cost you. So, you know, just keep an eye on your money. And then, see, we're already kind of spending everything. 5,000, so we've got a bit more. The nice thing is you can just do, you know, a section for as much money as you have, like here. And then I need to earn a bit more money. Now, that's all very well. That will speed things up. However, the problem now is that the timetables are not going to automatically adjust. And this early on in the game could end up taking up quite a lot of time. It's a bit annoying. Um, so 
what actually has to happen now and you need to do an entire cycle really to actually see every train and to adjust them is we're going to get a train coming out here in a minute and it's going down to platform five we've got another one coming out also going to platform five so we'll just get that one ready down there now this in its timetable had a certain amount of time built in to get to here but now it's going to be able to go twice as fast so you see it speeding up and it's going to get to platform five more quickly so the timetable said it was due at 1948 but as you can see from the time here let's speed up a little bit i would call that 46 so that's actually arrived two minutes faster than timetabled um, and so i'm going to leave that where it is for now um, until it gets where well, it's going to the other end isn't it I want to see what time it gets to here as well. And then I'm going to adjust the timetable for next time to take account of that. Now, I already know that this is going to arrive two minutes earlier, so I could adjust this one now. So we can see here the difference at the moment is 48 to 52. So it's given us four minutes, but obviously we've doubled the speed of the track pretty much. So we've now halved that time to two minutes so we can adjust that one down. And likewise, going backwards, it's also going to be two minutes quicker. So we're going to start having to do this for all of these trains and get them to a point where not only are we going to maximize our money, but most importantly, we're going to be increasing these gaps on the timetable um, to actually make space for more trains. So it is important, but it is a bit um, a bit of a faff. You can't automatically adjust the timetables. Um, and if you've got like 10 trains like I have, that's um, a bit annoying. So that's platform five. And also uh, before you adjust them, this train should have already left because it would have got there two minutes earlier. But it's still running to the old timetable. So it's now um, going to get even more in the way of this train, which is also going to get there quicker. So you sometimes have to put up with that for a little bit of time. And we haven't upgraded all of that anyway, only a bit of it. So we'll do that. So that top one we've already done. We need to reverse that because the auto reverse doesn't work. Okay, just want to have a look at this. Right, so again, that's due in at 51. That's still about correct. And that's because we didn't really upgrade most of that to 80. And it had to slow down for the signal. This one here is due in was due in at 53 it's kind of getting in at 51 so this section has not really been that quick if i take two minutes off of that because i'm going to adjust the timetable that would be 51 and that's about right so i'm going to top that down to 46 leave that at 51 so i think that should be right that is going to go back again that needs to go up here Let's just speed up a little bit. I can adjust them in here, um, which is a little bit fiddly, but it's not too bad. So for example, um, now that I know it's a two minute gap, I can hit the timetable button for that one and say, right, six to nine. So that needs adjusting. So we'll get rid of that. Right click will take us back to this page. Just check that one. Four to six, that one's already done. Uh, this one 8 to 50 that's already done this one uh, 31 should be 33 and 34 to 36 uh, that one 2 minutes 11 to 13 and 14 to 16 so we sped that one up so you see that's now given us the whole seven thousand dollars per train because we've sped it up even though we're not going full speed yet because it's only a short section of track now the other ones are there's only one other i think which is that one which this section will be quicker so again that needs to be 23 to 25 um, it's funny how some of these already seem to be adjusted a bit, little bit right so anyway we'll just run that a little bit we'll just keep an eye on them so that should be most of them done but now hopefully what that means is if we want to do this there's a lot more spaces in here now a lot more slack um, which is gonna yeah help us to um, fit more trains in 
So here we are back at Munich. We're doing a little bit of stuff here. I've saved up a few more XP. I've got a little bit more money, but I'm still doing a fair amount manually. What I've done since we the last video is added uh, a few more signals and a few more sensors in here. And what that means is I don't have to be setting these intermediate signals, but I'm still having to set um, departure routes from stations and arrival uh, trains as well. I need to set them into the correct platform. So the next thing we're going to look at is fantastic. The departure sensor, 25 points is quite a lot at this stage, but Munich is a hard map to get started in because of this very restricted uh, sort of line that you get to start with. But the departure sensor quite simply gets allocated to a platform and you configure which signal to set to where, depending on where the train's going to. So it's easier kind of seen. So I'll unlock that, which gives me these are 10,000 pops, so they're not cheap. But we can kind of put one on um, any platform that we want to configure. I don't have enough to put all five on yet, but maybe I'll just do a couple. And you kind of got um, a couple of different ways of configuring it. So when you've got a, a bigger station like this with a few more kind of different routes to go to, uh, you just left click it and this brings up that little box and you can see both the signals and um, any automatic signal arrows. So you can go to either an, a platform or any auto signal. So I can say, um, because it's basically shown all of the possible routes I can get to from platform five. So I want to go to that signal if I'm going to Richtung Mering. I want to go to that signal if I'm going to Richtung Weilheim. And eventually I want to go to that signal if I go to Richtung Kaufering. Now bear in mind that one of the gotchas with the departure sensor is if I put in signals here or change the track here in any way, then a little warning icon will come up here and this will need to be reconfigured. Uh, quite simply, it sort of plans in a route to get from there all the way to here. But if you put a signal in, then it can't actually go all the way to here. It'd have to go to the intermediate signal. So it kind of shows a trash icon. And oh, in fact, I can show you what it looks like. So let's say I dump a signal in here. I'm going to go back, Oop. right click, trying to get out again. You can see the little warning arrows come up in valid configuration. So you just left click it again and you can see that it's basically showing a thing saying I can't be, I can't reach this station from the signal. And that's because signals can only set to an intermediate signal. You can't sort of set it all the way across multiple signals to the end. So if that happens, all you have to do is hit the red trash bin and then select the new signal that you want to go to that station. So that's all you do. Um, so that's one way of doing it. The second way of doing it, especially for stations like this, where they only actually go to one place, is instead of choosing that and saying this station or the next station up here or this station, you can tick this little box. Again, the contrast is terrible because it, it's quite hard to see when it's ticked. It's a very slight yellow instead of white. But you can say, yeah, all, all stations that I haven't explicitly chosen um, go to this route. Uh, and I could do the same here and say that's basically everywhere. Don't worry about trains going off the map. They will automatically go off the map anyway. Um, it's only for trains controlled by a departure signal like that. And that's all we need to do. Now, the thing that's really cool about a departure sensor, if I just start again, um, is that it will automatically reverse the train if it needs to go backwards. So we've got a train here going to platform five. So you see what this looks like. Um, so the departure sensor here, when this train comes out at 43, let's speed up. We'll trigger a departure sensor, which will take it to here. The relay sensor will take it to here. And then it will stop at that signal because at the moment we don't have arrival sensors. But let's see what this is doing for us right now. I'm not sure why it's arriving 30 seconds early, really, but it doesn't really matter too much. So it set the signal for me. That was the departure sensor. It's triggering that relay sensor, which is going to here. And then if I don't do anything, it will reach that signal and stop. So that's going to platform five. So I still need to do the arrival bit manually. But if we look down here, the same thing will happen to this. 
um, it will automatically dispatch it to the correct location. This will automatically dispatch this train. Uh, actually, I don't need to do that anymore. Keep forgetting. That's going to go into here. And again, it's going to go as far as it can go. Now, this one, again, I don't have arrival sensors yet. This one's going to platform five. So I will need to set that by myself. But at the moment, what that means is from now, the only signals that I need to set manually are this one, this arrival signal and this arrival signal here. Everything else will be set for me automatically. And you can you can see how that's going to save me a load of time. So this is going to automatically see it doesn't show as reversed, but when it's ready to leave, it will automatically reverse. Um, that one doesn't have a, a departure sensor on it yet, so I need to do that one myself. But you can see that's all I need to do, and the rest of it's all taken care of. So all of that bit now is automatic. All of this bit is automatic. So you'll find that eventually you just put departure sensors on every platform for everything. Um, you know, the simple truth is they're super important, super useful, and um, yeah, 10, 10 grand a pop. So... Um, one of the ways these can catch you out, you might kind of, let's say I've just configured that one for this station and that station, and you might not have configured it for this one because maybe at the moment there are no trains going there, or maybe you haven't built the station yet, you haven't bought the station, in which case you can't configure it. But then you might buy the station and you don't necessarily think, oh, I need to go back and check all my departure sensors. And if you don't add a station and you don't have all others selected, when it gets to that and it goes to departure time, the train will just pull up to the signal and it will stop. And one of those little warning symbols will come up to show you that it doesn't know where to go. Um, that's fine. If that happens, you can obviously manually set the signal to where you want to go and then remember to go back in and say, ah, oh, yeah, I forgot I need to do that one if I'm going to here kind of thing. So that's the departure signal. I need to save up another uh, 20 greens and then I'll show you the arrival sensor which is just as useful and once I've got the arrival sensor sorted we get to the point where I don't need to do anything manually I can just hit 25 and I can just sit here running this thing for a few minutes to build up my cash build up my points and at that point uh, in a position to start building out the map some more so again I will fast forward and then we will look at arrival sensors OK, so we're back at the same map again. I've now have 30 XP green, so I have enough to buy the arrival sensor. So just to remind you at the moment, everything at, in between these two stations or these three stations is automatic except for arrival into the platform. So being able to come up to here and say I want to go into platform three, four or five and the same at this signal. So the good thing about this is I can kind of run this quite fast because I don't need to worry about trains arriving and immediately having to set the signal and just sort of hurrying around trying to get things working. All I, could, all I have to do is wait until a train is getting towards one of these, like that's platform five, and that's all I need to do. And then that's it until the next train comes in. So I'm kind of getting some of the benefit of automation, but clearly I can't expand my map a lot because I'm still doing um, a certain amount of manual work even if it's just those two signals and that's where the arrival sensor comes in because just like the departure sensor is for setting signals from a platform out the arrival sensor is designed for signaling trains into a station uh, they're 15,000 so they're a little bit more money but I have a little bit more money you put it just before the signal in my case the signal that I'm controlling um, and sometimes you're allowed to put two sensors in the same square like this. Sometimes you're not. It depends what the sensors are. And then once you've clicked it in and you come back out of the build menu, left click, click the signal, click the station, and that's it. Now what will happen is as a train approaches here, if it wants platform three, it will set a route into three if it's clear. If it's not clear, it will just stack the route. It will add it to the queue when that little number will come up. And then I just have to do the same thing here. Arrival sensor, signal, station. And now that will be everything. I can run that at 25 and everything will run. Well, I say that. I should probably check it first. Um, now, one thing to bear in mind, even at this early stage, we're only running up to 80 kilometers an hour. So 
we don't have um, a lot of time to play with. Um, and these sensors are, you know, maybe three squares away from uh, from the signal. As soon as you start getting faster trains, what you'll find is you'll need to move that sensor further away from the signal. So the train that might be doing 200 kilometers an hour instead of 80 um, can hit the sensor to clear the signal before it starts slowing down. So as you start speeding up tracks, as you introduce things like intercity trains and stuff, you'll start seeing lots more little warning signals come up as the trains are slowing down. But then they'll hit the sensor, the route will set, and then they'll speed up again. Um, but yeah, you will have to keep adjusting these. And sometimes where you don't quite have enough space uh, and it's not going to let you put it on top of another signal or something, sometimes you might even want it further back, like it, it can be beyond one or two signals um, here and can still trigger this signal. But obviously the further away you have it, the sooner this is gonna lock out a route into a platform. So if there is, for example, a train waiting to depart, it might get blocked if you have a train all the way back here. So you need to balance um, having it far enough back so it's got time to set the route before the train slows down, but not having it so far back that you're locking the route before you need to. But as you can see here, just with the departure and arrival sensor, and in my case, a couple of relay sensors, um, I could now run this at 25 times the speed. I don't have to do anything um, currently, but be very careful because it's easy at this point to think, oh, great, yeah, and then you maybe build some track and you leave this running, you build some track here, and if you're building track while a train tries to go across it, uh, it will basically come off the rails and you'll lose your game. So you need to make sure that if you do want to start building, you know, don't be in a hurry. Just pause it, uh, do your building and then unpause it again afterwards. So already we're only three features into tier two and we've already got, um, you know, a lot more stuff uh, available. Now, I don't need to talk about advanced tracks. It's the same as these. They're just faster. So you'll have the same issues. Um, it will allow your commuted trains to go full speed because at the minute they can go up to 120, but these tracks are all 80, so they will go faster. You will then have the same problem with timetables. Um, although if you create a new contract based on the new track speeds, you will get the correct times. So it's only existing contracts whose timetable that you'll need to adjust if you put down faster tracks. So I don't really need to talk about that. Don't really need to talk about even more stations. Like I say, that will just say you can have up to 12 at the minute. Um, I think I've got, I've got seven. Yeah, I can, I can buy three more stations if I want. Um, if I do that, I can get up to 12. So you'll need to unlock these as you expand the map. That's kind of obvious. More contract offers is just getting more options here. So you will at the basic level, you only get one contract offer per um whatever the conductor office dispatcher office those sorts of things you can see there's only ever one if you don't want it you can right click it and it will bring up another one uh, but obviously that's going to take you longer to find the ones that you want because you need to wait for the next offer whereas if you hit more contract offers then i think does, does it say yeah you'll get two rather than one so that's the gist of that um so the next thing we kind of just need to talk about briefly although it's going to be a while before i can demo these um, are intercity trains now an intercity train just like in real life is a fast passenger train their top speed is 200 kilometers an hour so with these 80 kilometer an hour tracks when you get offered a contract you won't be offered the full amount of money until you get right up to the 200 kilometer an hour tracks but that's not so much the issue the problem is that any train has to come in from either a coach yard which is something in the future or a what we call a sink station so ones that have these little icons a train has to originate here and then it needs to either finish in a coach yard or finish at another end station uh, so for example the commuter train here can start at this one go through here and go off at this one only freight trains have the ability to go to a station maybe wait for 20 minutes and then they'll just disappear which is a bit weird but they do that Passenger trains cannot do that. So if I, let's say I bought intercity trains, um, which I'll be able to now, because I've now got that, let's buy it, install. And what will happen now is as well as these commuter contracts, 
um, I'll be offered uh, intercity ones. Now that's assuming that the station supports intercity trains. So if you hover over it, you can see that little green thing saying that you will not get intercity trains at this station. Not surprising, one platform. I don't know what this is in real life, but it's probably a metro station or something. Uh, likewise, I expect that will be the same. No intercities. Uh, and if we hover over that, we see intercities do serve this. And the, my next question is going to be, does it serve this? Yeah, so we can have an intercity train. It can come in from here. It could go up to Geltendorf, but then what? Where's it going to go to? Now, unlike a commuter train, which can reverse and go back the other way, an intercity train has a locomotive on the front only, which you'll see in the icon. So you can see that this like looks like a locomotive on each end. On an intercity train, you'll see a locomotive at one end and then some coloured coaches afterwards. Now, what does that mean? Well, if the locomotive comes in forwards into here and I want to reverse back to go back where I came from, the locomotive is going to be at the back of the train instead of the front. And in rail route, that means a maximum speed of 40 kilometres an hour. Suitable for reversing or shunting, not suitable for a mainline train. And that's the problem with having intercity trains early on in the game, is you either need somewhere like a loop where you can turn them round so they can go back the correct way, or you need to be able to run them far enough through your map, maybe up here, round here, and into here, for example, so that it can go off the map and um, you know, and then you'll be okay. The problem with these is you can't see at the moment whether this actually supports um, intercity trains or not. Uh, if it doesn't, you know, how far are you going to have to go? I mean, this map's absolutely massive. You know, the <laughs> the main station, the Hauptbahnhof is here. Look how many platforms that has. It's crazy times. Um, so, and even this is not a, a sink station. So even if you've got your intercity to here, you would still need somewhere to reverse it, bring it back around, put it into a platform. And intercities don't give you any allowance for that reversing. So although you can do that, you're not going to, um, you'll probably lose money if you try and do a reverse in the timetable. So until you can get somewhere where you can get a long enough run, where you can run your intercity trains, you know, wherever, all the way up to somewhere like here, um, then you're probably not going to be much use for the time being. So where does that leave us? Um, I just want to show you what an inter intercity looks like, but I suspect we're not going to be offered many because um, if I go to the uh, this one, oh, I haven't got it unlocked yet. It's going to filter by intercity. Uh, it kind of looks the same as this. You, you know, it comes up, it mainly looks the same. The only difference is on an intercity train, most of these will not stop. So they won't have an arrival and a departure time. They will just have a passing time and then there'll be nothing down here. Um, and again, that's part of your planning. If you've got a commuter train stopping at every station on the way, and you, then you have an intercity train, you have to try and time it for the intercity train to go first, and then the commuter train to go behind it, because it's going to be slower, and otherwise it will get in the way. Um, but otherwise, yeah, the main thing to remember is with intercity trains, locomotive at the front, very fast, so you're not going to get maximum money until you've got your tracks upgraded. Um, but with a locomotive at the front, it's going to really limit you in certainly in a big map. In a small map, it's easier because you can normally get across the map in maybe three or four stations. Um, but but here, that's definitely not the case. Um, you know, everywhere's massive in here. So um, good luck with that on Munich. Um, and that's probably mostly all that we need to say about these. Um, like I say, the others kind of are obvious what they do. Intercities, we'll look at later once the map is a bit bigger and we have a bit more of a possibility for intercities. Um, later on, we will be looking at the red tier and we can look at using freights and regional trains, um, which also both have a locomotive at the front only. But unlike intercity trains, regional trains actually have an allowance to, at the end of one leg, you could turn the train around before it starts the next leg. So you do have time allocated to turn them around. Um, freights vary on each map. Some of them stop at, um, at certain stations for 20, 30 minutes in a platform. So you block up the station, which is annoying. Um, others will just run straight through as well. Uh, but we'll look at those in a, a later video. So yeah, what, what I now need to do is I just need to try and 
um, build out my map a bit, save up some more greens so that we can um, yeah, unlock some more stations and build out the map to the point that I've got space for 25 trains an hour because at the minute there's no way I'm going to get 25 trains an hour through this little single track layout. So I will um, yeah, keep running this map for a bit longer, wait till I've got enough points to unlock tier 3 and the routing sensor. And then once I've talked about that, like I say, the rest of these are quite self-explanatory and we're ready then to talk about the red stuff. So, yeah, it's going to be a while, I think, before I've done this. So I will speak to you guys soon.